Are you ready to become awesomer? Hello, everyone. My name is Umar Hamid. I'm your host on the No Limit Selling Podcast, where industry leaders share their tips, strategy, and advice on how you can become better, stronger, faster. Just before we get started, I've got a question for you. Do you have a negative voice inside your head? We all do, right? I'm going to help you remove that voice in under 30 days guaranteed. Not only remove it, but transform it. So instead of the voice that sabotages you, there's one that propels you to much higher levels of performance and success. There's a link in the show notes. Click on it to find out more. All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the No Limit Selling Podcast. And today I'm really excited because we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, women, because women truly are more thoughtful more passionate, more driven, more successful. But somehow in society, we have this notion that they're less than. And, you know, it'd be okay if it was just men thinking that, but it's women think that too. And the three of us today are going to put a stop to that right now. And today I'm joined with Beverly and Alona. Alona, why don't you give us like a a 60 second snapshot of you and then let's get down to how do we make this world a better place? Yeah, thanks so much for having me on your show. I love the topic today, and I hope I will contribute with my experience with um, helping women really um, realize the unlimited potential that they have inside of us. And it's true. It's uh, we do it to ourselves. Uh, we're our worst critic a lot of times. So, um, so a little bit about me. I help purpose-driven entrepreneurs grow their businesses on purpose through branding, marketing, sales systems, and team. So they can have the most um, impact and income that they're looking for, while also um, putting their mission out there in the world and making a big difference with the work they do. Brilliant. Uh, Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. And tell us like a snapshot of who you are in 60 seconds. Okay. I am an artisan jewelry designer a life transition coach, and a podcast host. And I'm dedicated to women's empowerment and the journey a woman goes through from early life to later life to find how she's truly empowered and feeling self-worth. The first thing that comes up is that quote from uh, Ginger Rogers or a description of her. And you guys have probably all heard this. It was like Fred Astaire was the best dancer in the world. And it was like, yeah, right. But Ginger Rogers did the same thing he did, only backwards and in high heels. So, you know, women truly do rock. So why do you think uh, we have this notion that women are less than because I guarantee most everywhere in the world, there's moms telling their daughters, you could do anything, you're amazing, you're powerful, but yet we still kind of treat them like second-class citizens. Why do you think that happens? Take it away. Uh, Alona, why don't you start first and we'll go to Beverly. I have my thoughts on that. So I think it's also culturally um, inclined or we've been programmed that way. I mean, I think we, we've come you know, um, from a males dominated world where men were really the main providers in the family and women, you know, would need to nurture the family and all of that and grow and raise a family. So I don't think that we have been able to, you know, showcase our abilities, the things we could do. And in the ways that we've actually managed to run our families, it's much like we run companies. Um, It's what I've noticed with working with so many women. So I think one of the factors is that, that now then there's more opportunity, there's this big boom, women are, you know, uh, working on themselves, we are um, owning our light, our power and all of that. So it's it's why we are seeing a lot of women in leadership positions, in businesses, in other fields, uh, showcasing those abilities. Um, But I would say that it comes from our nurturing, um, you know, our nurturing side of, you know, being able to, and you don't have to be a mother, I I have two kids, but we have the nurturing side of us inside of us. So we're more collaborative. Um, You know, we want to ensure that everyone feels, especially with leadership, part of a team, we're all working together towards something uh, versus I came also from the corporate environment where it was more male dominated, like go, 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 do, do, do. So I think um, in my personal journey, I've also discovered how to combine both our nurturing nice. nature and also the executive part of things and using our inner intuition, which is actually given to us uh, to make really internal decisions for our life and also the things that we do in our companies as well. Brilliant. And uh, before we go to Beverly, I'm just going to make a comment. Some of the most successful CEOs I've seen 
are women that used to be uh, teachers. Mm. Something about that ability. And it's like, how is it different elementary school kids versus your uh, management team? They go, they're both children. I manage them. (laughs) (laughs) So Beverly, uh, so why do you think, uh, you know, the reality is women are powerful, but yet there's a disconnect between potential and execution uh, by society. Like what's going on? I think there's really two things going on. One is the patriarchal society that we've grown up in, that men are superior, even back to the caveman days. And um, think about how long it took women to get the right to vote, the right to have a credit card in their name, the right to buy a home in their name, and how much further behind we are than men who got those privileges. So I think that speaks to not only men's overall opinion that women are lower, but also kind of society's laws and pressures that keep them down. You know, you look at um, how few CEOs we have that are women. You, You see how many senior teams only have one woman. A token woman. You're our token. And, Behave. Um, you see what percentage women's salaries are of men. And it's a pervasive thing. And I I mean, to me, it's it's been carried down for generations. And it ha- the chain hasn't been broken. So, so let me I kind think- of push, push back on that a little bit. Sure. Uh, all of what you said was true. But here's an interesting kind of stat. I don't have the exact uh, figures, but, you know, men go with, we just wing it. So- I remember in the 90s seeing data that, you know, men, quote unquote, are the breadwinners, but all major decisions are made by women in the house. Right. Which car, which fridge, which house. So women had the power to make the decisions in a buying situation, and yet there was still a disconnect. So it was like, uh, they were like the the power behind the guy. Uh, Any thoughts on that, ladies? Well, I think that... um... There's a difference between influencing the decision or knowing what you want and then taking your power to step into that leadership role of the family. I think women have historically held back and played small to a man. So I think another element of why these situations exist is because women haven't stepped up. We're afraid, we've been taught differently, and that kind of thing. So, Alona, to you, in the African-American community in the U.S., uh, they've really taken the N-word and kind of made it their own and kind of taken some of that energy out of it. It's still there and it's still, you know, a challenging word. But one of the things I notice is that the label that women get called if they kind of express their power as bitch Mm-hmm. And if a guy does, you know, five times more aggression as a woman, he's like seen as uh, assertive. And if a woman does 20% of that, all of a sudden she gets labeled something not nice. So it's almost like we need to take that word back and claim it and say uh, almost proudly, it's like, yeah, you guys have a double standard because women are strong. Alona, kind of thoughts on that? Am I like uh, talking crazy or does that make sense? So I think it's because, you know, we we have never – we. We have not stepped up, just like what Beverly said, um, into, you know, the roles that beyond the home roles, you know, over time and over history. So when now that we are shining our light and we are, you know, putting ourselves out there, obviously judgment is always the first thing that most people, you know, they're not used to seeing women step up in that light. So, you know, calling calling them those those phrases it comes from insecurity, maybe because now we're reflecting that light and they're like, oh, wait a minute, they can actually, you know, they're able to do that. So um, rather than obviously embracing that and empowering us and encouraging us, I think it's, you know, out of fear because we have not done it before. So it's a new, you know, it's a new energy, it's a new era. I think even in partnership, in my culture, um, I do like what you said with um, women over history have always been very influential just in their role within the home. And now we can be influential within the other roles that we have now we are exploring. But just like Beverly said, we've kind of followed traditional paths and roles. I mean, in my, in my culture for the longest, you're molded to be a mom and take care of the family. Like that's what your job is. You get married and you actually have kids and that's what you do. 
and you support your husband that works outside the home. I mean, now it's changed, thankfully, because we now we're, we're understanding there's so much more to it. But I think that's really where it comes from. And now that we're stepping into these different roles and we're not defying ourselves from the roles, from being a mom, being a wife, um, you know, even being a whatever role within your job, we're, we're learning to grow and self-develop and define ourselves by our own intuition, our own values. Now we are co-creating, you know, the realities and we are showcasing our gifts and abilities in new settings. Brilliant. Which is why I'm saying more. I'm going to do an impression, see if you guys can figure out who I'm trying to be. For those watching, I'm holding up my uh, muscle and flexing it. You guessed it right. Rosie the Riveter. Do, do you guys remember her? Know who she is? I was going to say Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> oh, I'm too cute for that. But uh, what was interesting was in the Second World War in the U.S., the men went off to fight. And those delicate creatures called women were building bombers and tanks and doing all the jobs that men did. And after the war finished, it was like, all right, little lady, time for you to go back to the house. You're not equipped to do this. It's like... Hey, for five years of the war, we were building everything and doing everything that men did. And all of a sudden, it was almost taken away from them. These guys need jobs and you have to go back into the kitchen. Yes. So it's, it's kind of astounding. So on the second half of what we're doing, I, we're going to play a game. And the game is called Empowerment. And what we need is what are the tools we can teach young women and girls and also, I guess, women that are out there in the wild, that would empower them and make them stronger and more confident. So why don't we start with uh, which one of you ladies would like to go first and share a tool that someone could implement today? It could be an insight or uh, a mechanism to be more powerful. And let's see what number we get up to in the next little while. Who'd like to go first? Go, I'll go. I think, I think something they can do is believe in themselves and believe in themselves no matter what. And if they don't believe in themselves, I want them to think about a person they think believes in themselves and act that way until they do believe in themselves. I love it. So number one, act as if, and that's brilliant. And, or believe in yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Alona, what would you like to share? I would say get educated, invest in yourself. Brilliant. So I'm going to say sometimes, you know, we all have weakness and areas of weakness, and we tend to focus on that and beat ourselves up. And I think, so let's say there was an area of weakness. You can say, you know, I'm a powerful person and sometimes I'm not. And it lets you focus on the powerfulness and gives you slack on where you weren't. And I think sometimes it just changes the mindset. So rather than beating yourself up, like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. It's like, I'm a badass woman. And sometimes I'm not. And that's okay. I'm going to get better and learning helps. So back to you, Beverly, you get to do number four. Sure. I think that um, having understandings and communications when you go into a marital situation, that there's an equal partnership rather than somebody that's um, above and below. Um, negotiating that and finding that out before you get married, I think is important. Brilliant. I would say affirmations. Um, I mean, I, it's back to what you were saying with affirmations, have affirmations that you can believe and also have an open, always continuous um a continuous growth mindset that even though some days I feel like a badass, but other days I'm just getting by, it's both part of the human experience and feeling both, it's okay. A lot of times when we uh, we feel like we have to reject all the negative feelings so that we only focus on the positive, but I think we should embrace all of them. They're all part of our experience and just to forgive ourselves for the days that we maybe are not so driven or on top of our things or perform and, you know, on, on top performance and, and in the things that we want to accomplish. So just like allowing all the human experience to come to us, but definitely have affirmations that speak to you internally that you can constantly repeat um, to yourself. And I would also say get a mentor, someone that can hold the mirror for you because we don't do a good job in discovering our own gifts to us. They're just natural, but to other people, 
Um, I do this work all the time and I could see so many amazing things that you could, you probably just think it's a natural day to day. Like everyone probably does that, but that's actually not true. We're all so different. And that becomes your, you know, powerful positioning point, wherever it's your, in your career or in your business. Alona, that's not it's a typical women, right? Overachieving. She gave me two. So I'm going to actually Tell a story around that. And this is something men do really well. We take your ideas and claim it's our own. So I'll tell you a story and I'll make it my idea. I was watching this interview with four really powerful women in Silicon Valley, and it was a woman interviewing them. And one of the women being interviewed said this, is that if a young woman reaches out to me for help, I'll stop everything and I'll help her. And you're right. Getting a mentor is not just you begging for this. People that have experience are begging to give back. And when you reach out and ask for help and say, you know, I'd like to be a protege, there are lots of powerful women that are waiting to hear that to help you. And I think it's a really great relationship. And that's something men have done a lot. I think in the police force, they call it having a rabbi, somebody, you know, a captain or above that helps somebody coming in navigate the political system and also doing that. So thank you for sharing that. And so I'm not totally stealing your idea. I think very much when you wake up in the morning, I think taking the time to really find three things that you're grateful for that day. And not only just finding those three things. So I am grateful for, let's say the time I spent with my significant other this morning. And if I go back and kind of sense into the emotions of that time and the richness and the love, that's where the magic is. And I just think I'm grateful for this person. Think about a time you were with them and what you felt and the emotions of the power. So being grateful every morning just changes your mindset throughout the day. All right, Beverly, now it's getting tougher. We're getting up there into numbers. That's so true. Um, I would say have a support system, a circle of friends or a few friends that are dealing with life as a woman too or have a coach that has been through those experiences that can guide you. I think when I started in business and I started in banking in corporate, uh, women didn't help other women. Women pushed other women out of the way. Yep. They clawed their way to the top. They kept them from every opportunity, much so than a man. I've even heard women say they were helped more by men in their career than in women. And I think a good bit of that still occurs today, and it occurs more heavily in the corporate environment than in the entrepreneurial environment. And I think that has to do with the lack of women at the top, because women start competing for only one position, and that creates an environment of, you know, adversity, And so I think, uh, and the other thing that I think happens is once women tend to focus solely on husbands and children Mm -hmm. and work, but then once they have children, they kind of drop their support system because all their energy is in the husband, the children and work. So I think, and I did that and I wish I had carved out the time to build my own support system long-term and it would have helped me greatly. Brilliant. Alona. Comparison. Don't compare yourself. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a big toxic behavior. Just compare yourself to the yesterday, how far uh, across you've come. And I always say that be careful when you compare yourself to other people because you are dimming your own light and uh, you think that their light is the best or you want to have that. And it's okay that we admire one another if we... I find it this way with a mirror um, comparison that if um, there's someone that's holding a light and you attract to that energy or you admire to that quality, it really just means that it's inside of you. Otherwise, you would not have identified that. So work on that to improve yourself daily and only focus on your own individual journey without comparing yourself with other people so that it can make you feel bad or you can get you discouraged. You're doing yourself a big disservice. Brilliant. Thanks so much for sharing your wisdom today. And before we part company, Alona, I'm going to go to you first. What's one thing that brings you joy in your work? (sighs) Um, So the one thing that brings me joy to my work is really seeing people, um, especially women entrepreneurs, be their badass self with no limits, 
past all the limits in their lives and really live a life on purpose, be spiritually fulfilled with the work that they do, showcase that to the world and make the biggest impact that you can make with that. And I say that purpose-driven entrepreneurs will shape, will change the world because they're internally driven and any impact they have, influence they have, or income they have, they will use it for good out there in the world. Love it. Beverly, what brings you joy in your work? A little bit similar. It's when I'm coaching women or helping women, it's seeing that light come on in their eyes, that it's almost like they've come alive or they've reinvented themselves with a different mindset, a different set of behaviors, and that their life feels more fulfilled by getting in touch with their purpose. Brilliant. Now, each of you get to ask me a question. Beverly, okay, why don't you go? I've got one. So why do men think they are superior to women? It's safer that way. I really do. I think women in a lot of ways are stronger, more powerful. And, and also, I think we're disconnected from emotions generally. And people that have emotions make us feel uncomfortable. So it's like a keep them subdued. And a quick second question, what can we do to change that? Men need more hugs. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a quick, but I guess uh, really what I was saying was, I think the answer to all these problems is this, is when I drop into a state of love, and that's not like uh, romantic love or family love, just that state of beingness. When I stop there, I see the human in you. And I see the human in you, Alona. And I think if we could all do that first, it would just change the world in significant ways. Alona, what question would you like to ask me? Yeah, my question is actually something that um, I'm always curious about. Um, I find that in business, women, because we we have the emotions more probably developed on the intuition side of us, I find that that also is the main reason that holds us back because we do take everything much more personally. We're more perfectionistic. So that stops us for really, you know, driving and making the impact that we want to make. How is it that you guys can manage your emotions a lot better in the business world versus women? I'm not sure the answer to that, but I do have a comment on the women and their emotions. So I think one of the things I want everyone watching this to know, and especially you two, you have the God-given right to suck. And by that, what I mean is this, is that uh, women more so than men because of society, because of themselves, need to do things and it needs to be close to perfection. And I think one of the things men will do for the most part is just go execute. And if it's not right, they'll bullshit their way to making it sound right, or they'll learn from it and just get better. And I think women hold themselves back till they get it absolutely perfect. And I think cutting yourself slack and just executing is the best way to achieve. And iteration is the best way to success. Is nobody gets it right the first time, so why bother? Just execute and learn. And going back to the points you made, having a group of people that can support you and be there for you and not feel afraid to say, you know, Beverly, you suck. This is like a dumb decision. And you can only do that with people you love and you trust. And I think having that group of people, whether it's men or women, that have your best intentions at heart but don't need to be polite they just need to, to love you to help you grow better. I think that would be amazing. And like today, we had a great conversation. And thank you so much for being on the program, Beverly and Alona. I really, really appreciate it. Can I add one thing? Sure. I think something absolutely critical is we need to break the chain. So if you have children, if you have boys, teach them that it's not a patriarchal society. And if you have girls, teach them to find their voice and believe in themselves. Bird. Thanks so much, guys. And looking forward to our next conversation. And goodbye. Thank Bye -bye. you so much. Thanks for having us. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. And if you're looking for more tools, go to my website at nolimitselling.com. I've got a free mind training course there that's going to teach you some insights from the world of neuro-linguistic programming and that is the fastest way to get better results.